The Mediterranean diet is powerful because you're eating so much pizza. What makes the Mediterranean diet so unique isn't just one or two staple foods or the macronutrient ratios or anything like that. It comes down to just a coordinated effort, a symphony of different powerful anti-inflammatory things that work so well within the body. There's a reason that the Mediterranean region is considered a blue zone where people live for a long period of time. They have adopted a lot of these principles that don't just reflect in the diet, but they reflect in their lifestyle, their family, everything like that. So we're going to break down some of the more obscure foods in the Mediterranean diet that pack a powerful punch that we may not think of because we're busy focusing on the mainstream things like the cheeses, the big cuts of fish and stuff like that. So let's have some fun with this. Uh, please do hit the red subscribe button and also hit that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications. I'm going to jump right in. Okay, the first one that I want to touch on is when we eat a salad here in the States or in the Western world, I know a lot of people are watching videos from different cuts of the world, but we are usually consuming like romaine or a spring mix. When you look at the Mediterranean regions, the greens that they're using are different. Okay, they're using nutrient dense greens. And one that I want to highlight that's used a lot is dandelion. Okay, dandelion has powerful, powerful anti-inflammatory effects. There's one in particular called hydroxycinnamic acid and another one called chlorogenic acid. Now these are two acids that have profound effects. Now chlorogenic acid, for example, you're going to find in coffee and chlorogenic acid is largely argued as the reason coffee is better than regular caffeine because you get the chlorogenic acid that cancels out some of the potential negative aspects of caffeine. So you're getting that in a salad form in a really, really rich form. Now these two acids can play a role in downregulating something called prostaglandin 2. Now what that is, is an inflammatory response within your body. We don't want that to be elevated. When that is elevated, it is sending a signal to alter or increase inflammatory responses within the body. So we have a powerful mechanism there. Inflammation, a big problem. We want to do what we can to at least keep it at bay. Now, the Mediterranean lifestyle in general is pretty laid back. Okay, they focus on proper meal timing, so they have the right gaps in between meals, so that's why they're largely pretty lean. They also have smaller portions, so their body's able to tap into their stored resources a little bit better because they're not always filling themselves up with food. Basically, they're reducing a lot of the stressful parts on their body simply by the nature of how they live. Next one I want to jump into is a little bit more of an esoteric look at olives. Okay, olives and to an extent olive oil. Okay, look at olives. We don't eat enough of them here in the Western world. We'll consume our olive oil because we're told that it's healthy and I'll explain about olive oil in a second. But what about wholehearted, just good olives? You're getting the monounsaturated fat that you would get from the olive oil, but you're getting it in its natural universe given form, right? Along with the antioxidants that come with the olive, along with the fiber that comes with the olive. We're talking about one particular antioxidant called hydroxytyrosol, which is so powerful when it comes down to how it affects cholesterol. I just don't know why we're not just scarfing olives like crazy here in the Western world. Now let's touch on olive oil for one second because olive oil is probably the most powerful oil that's out there. And for people that do a lower carb diet, they typically kind of shun the olive oil because they're focused on the coconut oil. Well, don't do that. Get that olive oil in. There's an interesting study that was published in Diabetes Care that showed when you consume 23% of your daily calories from olive oil, which sounds like a lot, but it's not that hard to do, there is a tremendous reduction in visceral fat. Visceral fat is the belly fat that's underneath your belly that you don't see. It's what gives you a pot belly. It's what causes a lot of issues because visceral fat is very inflammatory. It leaks inflammatory cytokines that trigger cascades throughout the rest of the body. So that's powerful. But then there was a landmark study published in the journal Cell that demonstrated that one of the primary fats that's in olives and olive oil elevates what is called uncoupling protein. Now uncoupling protein takes white fat, which is just kind of the nasty fat that's hanging out in your body, and turns it into brown fat. Brown fat is metabolically active and burns calories just by existing. So you can take fat that doesn't really do much for you and actually turn it into something that burns calories for you. I don't know about you, but for me, that's tremendous. So that's why olive oil is a huge part of my life. Now, I also want to recommend Thrive Market down below if you want. Thrive Market uh, is a place where I would typically get, like I have these little packets of olives that I use. In fact, let me show you. Like these guys, little packets of olives and stuff that I carry around with me. But also, 
I get my olive oil, I get avocado oil and everything through Thrive Market. They deliver it right to your doorstep, super, super convenient, cheaper than the grocery store in many, many cases, and it gets delivered right to your doorstep. But also, I'm a big fan of Primal Kitchen. Now, Primal Kitchen is showcased in Thrive Market a ton. Okay, so Primal Kitchen has some of the highest quality olive oil, so the highest quality olive oil and avocado oil that you're gonna find, plus tremendous sauces, tremendous marinades, tremendous mayonnaises, everything like that's leveraging those Mediterranean oils and those Mediterranean fats. So they're like my one-stop shop in Thrive Market. So there's a link down below if you want to check out Primal Kitchen at Thrive Market. You can use their sugar-free ketchup, their sugar-free marinades, all which do not have artificial sweeteners. They're using just either natural components or they're entirely unsweetened, which is a huge part of the Mediterranean diet to begin with. They don't have a bunch of sweets in there. They might have a little bit of fruit, but pies and cakes, those are for special occasions. They're not part of their daily life. And Primal Kitchen is all about that too, okay? They have a paleo spin. So anyhow, Thrive Market, special link, get your groceries delivered to your doorstep, and you can get all your Primal Kitchen stuff there too, which is largely Mediterranean. The next one is one of my personal favorites, and that's artichokes. Okay, now in the Mediterranean cultures, a lot of times they eat the whole thing. Now here in the Western world, a lot of times we just eat the meat, but you can eat a lot of the whole artichoke. You don't have to waste the whole thing. What makes it special is there's a very, very unique kind of fiber in it. It's called a very long chain inulin. Now, very long chain inulin means when it goes into your gut, it starts as a long chain fiber that has to get broken down. So you have gut bacteria that come in, they start to break it down. They break it down into smaller chunks. And then a different kind of bacteria come in and break down those smaller chunks. They're called intermediary bacteria. And then it's in smaller chunks. And then a different stage of intermediary bacteria come in and break it down. And then finally, it's broken down into what are called short chain fatty acids as sort of a byproduct that is an additional energy source as a result of breaking down the fiber. So what's cool is the longer the chain of the fiber, the more diverse of the gut bacteria you get to feed and nourish. Shorter fibers only feed one or two you know, sets of strains, whereas longer fibers might feed dozens of strains, right? Or more than that, realistically, but dozens of categories of strains. So very powerful and a very unique fiber. So definitely recommend you get that in no matter what kind of diet you're doing. Then we have radicchio, which is basically a radish, right? That's what we'll call it here. Now they are super powerful because they're rich in what are called anthocyanins. Now anthocyanins are the same kind of thing you're gonna find in a blueberry. And if you've seen my videos before where I talk about the benefits of blueberries, even if you're on low carb diet and you have a small amount of them, it's that pigment, those anthocyanins that have been demonstrated to be super powerful for the brain. Increasing levels of BDNF, nerve growth factor, helping new neurons grow, helping potential nerve uh, stem cells, all these things. So brain food to the max. Now let's jump into the proteins for a second. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this because we know that good clean lean protein is good, but there's three kinds of fish that the Mediterranean cultures eat a lot of. And when I say a lot of, they're just consistent with them. They don't eat buckets of them, but we're talking about sardines, mackerel, and anchovy. Okay, these are three very small fish, mackerel being a little bit bigger, but very high fat fish. High fat in the omega-3, docosahexaenoic acid, DHA, omega-3s that we want. Now, they're unique because of the ratio of DHA that they have. Smaller fish are going to have a higher level of DHA typically. They're also more stable when it comes down to toxicity and when it comes down to how, what they're exposed to in the water because shorter lifespan, smaller fish. Now, the big thing comes from the vitamin D that you're getting out of them. If you're eating anchovies and sardines, a lot of times you're eating the skin and the bones too. They're small fish and that's just how they're typically consumed. So you're getting this full diverse bioavailable nutrient profile. You're getting the vitamin D, you're getting the calcium, you're getting the magnesium, and you're also getting the selenium, which is super powerful for the thyroid. And you look at sort of the metabolism of people in these Mediterranean cultures and they have a relatively fast metabolism. It's interesting because their caloric intake isn't all that much. So you'd think they have a slower metabolism, but their metabolisms are pretty quick and it probably has to do with the kinds of things that they're eating and the kinds of fuel that their bodies are utilizing. Now let's jump to cheese. Hard aged cheeses, but mainly hard aged sheep and goat cheeses like Pecorino Romano. Okay, there's some forms of Parmesan that I think are really good too, but Pecorino Romano is unique because it's very, very high in conjugated linoleic acid. And there's a lot of Mediterranean studies that look at CLA, conjugated linoleic acid, as a powerful weight loss tool, but also being very good for the heart. It's interesting because CLA is something that people take in supplement form all the time, but that's a synthetic form. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for naturally occurring, which comes from you know ruminants, right? So it's gonna come from sheep, from cows, things like that, but it's gonna be higher potency with sheep and higher potency with uh, goats. 
Additionally, because it's a goat cheese or a sheep cheese, you're going to have a higher level of MCTs, which are going to be quicker digesting, easy to utilize fats, but you also have it aged, which means that the casein proteins are broken down in a different way. They use lots of these cheeses. You don't see a lot of the processed cruddy cheeses that we use here in the Western world. So they add these in and you actually have a benefit to it, not just a net neutral effect. Now I want to talk garlic for one second and keep this short. We use tons of garlic in a Mediterranean cuisine. Okay, we use a lot of garlic in the Western world too, but the difference is how we use it. A lot of the Mediterranean cultures will not only cook with it, but they'll use fresh, unadulterated garlic. They'll chop it up, they'll let it sit for a minute, they'll just throw it into a salad, they'll throw it into a salad dressing. You're getting this fresh, unadulterated garlic that has the potent antioxidants, the potent uh, antibacterial that we know the allicin, which is in garlic, has, right? So, with very powerful properties there. So, they use it everywhere. And obviously, because of its known attributes, it just makes sense. So I would recommend starting to use it in its raw form a little bit more. Just cut it up, let it sit for 15 minutes so that it can actually activate and the enzymes can do its job, and then you're off to the races. And the last thing that's very important that we cover is the Mediterranean diet is usually rich in a diverse amount of grains, but they don't eat a ton of grains. So yeah, it's not exactly a keto diet at its nature. It's not a low-carb diet. The Mediterranean diet does have these starchy and non-starchy vegetables, but the grains that they're consuming are generally not super high in gluten and how they're processed and truly if you're coming from a European region you're not going to have the glyphosate issue that you're going to have with a lot of the wheat and the gluten that you have here in the States. So it's a whole different ball game but there's also a lot of non-gluten grains that they use and also a lot of very low glycemic starches that they use. For example my favorite one is chickpea. I consume a ton of chickpea. So chickpea pasta, chickpea flour, uh, chickpeas straight up, right? There's a study that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that demonstrated that just consuming consuming 100 grams of chickpeas per day for 12 weeks could elicit a very powerful effect on blood sugar stabilization. Okay, we're talking a pretty significant change. And that's just because how they break down. Not to mention there's some levels of resistant starches in there. The world that is yet to be uncovered is the microbiome effect of the Mediterranean diet. There's lots of research that looks at it, but the microbiome is largely affected in a positive way with the kinds of foods that are coming in. Lots of vegetables, lots of fibers, you name it. Anyhow, as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and please don't forget to check out Thrive Market down below in the description.